So chapter three is on soil science. Not the, mo not the most exciting thing in the world, but uh, it's important for us to go over it and to understand some things. Um, especially when it comes to urban development and uh, if you're if you're being involved in blueprinting like a landscape soil selection is very important then so um, yeah I'm gonna do my best as usual um, but yeah it's a very dry topic <laughs> but let's get let's crack right into it okay cool so uh, your soil is made up of 45% mineral solids like your uh, your your clays your silt and your sand um and if, if you take a handful of of dirt right like and you look at it 50 percent of that is actually um just space where filled with water or air and um five percent is organic matter all right so there's five horizons in your soil and this is a uh, like they can be found as uh, the discoloration of dirt as you dig deeper and deeper. So the five are O, E, A, B, and C. I'm mainly worried about O, E, and A. So O and E is your organic layer. If I understand this right, remember, I am, I'm still learning. Um, but that's like your forest floor, right? This is where you're decomposing... Uh, decomposing leaves are this is it's an the area that's rich in organic matter and then a is your top soil okay this is where you're absorbing roots hang out this is this is where the tree gets its most nutrition from so let's talk about this 50 percent space because that's pretty crazy um that soil is 50% space. There's two different pores in soil. There's macro pores and micro pores. Macro pores are your larger openings. These don't hold water um, against the force of gravity. It will uh, drain out over time. And micro pores are your smaller cavities in your soil, which do hold water and where your tree will get water from. Sometimes they can be so tight though that the tree can't even access it. So that's something to be aware of as far as uh, the water availability and the, the, the soil structure. Okay, so uh, soil actually has its own pH as well. So pH is measured on a scale from 0 to 14. 7 is neutral. Anything above 7 is acidic. Anything below seven is alkaline. Uh, trees like to trees do best in a like uh, in a six to six point five environment on the scale. And so knowing this, you can raise or lower the pH of the soil. The book gives the example of lime um, raising the pH and sulfur. Yeah, sulfur lowering the pH of the soil. All right, so this is gonna get a little confusing. Um, read the book, make sure I get this right, because I'm still learning, I'm learning with you. But um, when it comes to fertility of the soil, right? Minerals are dissolved in water, and the minerals are um, charged particles called ions. Positive ions are cations, and this is kind of the base, you know, what's important, what we're measuring when we're measuring fertility of the soil. And um, the measurement is called cation exchange capacity, CEC, or the ability to attract and retain and exchange positive cations. Soils also have what's called a buffering capacity, and this simply put is just the resistance to change in pH. These will be, which can be a good or bad thing. If a tree's already there, odds are it has a good pH level to keep that tree nourished and fed. Um, and it will resist, like uh, in urban environments, it will resist changing due to external, you know, due to just being in the city and um, human influence on the soil. 
Okay, cool. Um, I appreciate you if you're still here listening. I hope I was able to share some good information with you. That was chapter three on soil science. I'm not a geologist. I'm not, I, I, I don't, I'm learning these things with you. Um, I'm doing this series to prepare myself for, for the ISA Arborist exam as well. So I just want to say, if you're still watching, thank you so much. Um, don't be afraid to leave some advice in the comments. If there's something you wish I touched on that I didn't in this chapter, let me know. You know, I'd love to know. And um, let's uh, study for this thing together and figure it out.